Hi guys, has anyone ever seen one of these? Little New Testament Gideon's Bible. They have been passed out all over the world. You probably have one at home in your drawer somewhere. Most of us do. Gideons have been very diligent about going to schools, prisons, nursing homes, uh, hospitals. They have went everywhere, passed these things out. And I'm sure as an elementary student, you probably got one. And I got one. And you may have been one of those uh, students that put your name in the back of it, that you accepted Jesus as your Savior, but you forgot all about it. I'm here today to remind you about that. Uh, the Lord laid this little message on my heart today in this video and talk about these little Bibles, these New Testaments. And it's for someone, maybe not you, but maybe someone else. And if it's not for you, then pray that whoever it's supposed to be for uh, will receive it. And something else I encourage you to do, uh, since how it is about salvation, share this uh, video with someone that may need it. Uh, you know. So, uh, what about these little Gideon Bibles? Let me get the other one that I got laying here. In the back of these Gideon Bibles, the Gideons have placed like a little format of the salvation plan of God. Maybe you can see that. And they started off by saying that God loves you, which he does. Uh, let me just, I'll just kind of go through this format with you. It says, uh, God loves you, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Then Romans 5, 8 says that God demonstrated his love for us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus Christ didn't come to this earth to die for righteous people. He came to this earth and died as our sacrifice for sin from godly people. The Bible says, in the, next, the next, I'm getting ahead of the, the format. All are sinners, it says. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. And I'll add another scripture to that. It says in Isaiah that our righteousness is as a filthy rag before God. In other words, God is totally pure, totally holy, totally loved. No person can ever come before his presence by their own self-effort. Now, I know sometimes we could be good people, we could do some good things, but we have an issue with inner, innermost being, and that's called sin. And because of that, no one can ever approach God. Uh, a lot of people have that false uh, misconception, is that I, if I just do enough good deeds, I'll, God accept me. Or if I can just go to church, God accept me. If I get baptized, God will accept me. If I just keep, keep the Ten Commandments, God will accept me. No, He won't. If He accepted you based on that, then he, Jesus died for nothing. So Jesus is God's plan of salvation. When he died on the cross, he said it is finished. He paid the total price for you because he loved you. Going to the next uh, part of the format, God's remedy for sin. It says in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, when he's talking about death, he ain't talking about just physical death. Eternal death is the eternal separation from God in the lake of fire. There's a, there's a physical death, but there's also a spiritual death to be separated from God forever. I want you to think about that for a second. God is love. God is light. God is pure. God is mercy. God is kindness. God is all these wonderful qualities we think about. Well, if you take that equation out of it, what do you have left? You have darkness. You have hate. You have, uh, I, I can't even think about what it all means. It's just the opposite. And just the opposite of God would have to be hell. For the worm dieth and the fire is not quenched, Jesus said. Jesus talked about hell as much as it did heaven. So it is a place to think about and to shun. Going to the next verse. Uh, John 1.12 in this format says, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. So if you will receive Jesus as your Savior, you have the right to be a child of God. It says in Galatians, he says, We are children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. And one more scripture. For I delivered you, this is in 1 Corinthians 15 and 3, 4. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. 
Jesus Christ said of himself, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man can come to the Father but by me. There's no other religion. There's no other way. Good deeds, good works. No one can come to God unless it be through Jesus Christ. So the, the trick of Satan is to blind people's eyes, which he does, and get them to think, well, there's many roads that lead to heaven. That's a lie. It feels good. Oh, yeah. We're all children of God. But, and, and God loves us all. Yeah, he does love us all. We're all his creation, but we're not all his children. Those who have put their faith in Jesus Christ, they are his children. It's your choice, though. God does not force us uh, into accepting him. God's telling you, I love you. Uh, and if you're watching this day and God's tugging at your heart, that's because this is a divine appointment for you. I'm sitting here explaining something very simple to you from a, probably a Bible that you own or have been given at one time. But it's your choice. God still will not force you, even though it's been all these years. But God's been doing this to you. Come on now. It's time. It's time. It's time to come to Jesus. Now, if you'll do that, if you'll call on the name of the Lord today, you can be saved. You can have security in your heart that you have eternal life, that you're going to heaven. And all you have to do is pray a simple prayer. It's an invitation. It's a free gift. God offers you something. It's a free gift. And how do you get a free gift? You just take it. He's offering you salvation today. Will you accept it? And if you will, just pray this little prayer or one summer to it. Lord, I believe in you, Lord. I believe you died for my sins. I believe you rose again on the third day. I need you, Jesus. Please come into my heart and come into my life, Lord, and save me. I need saved. I turn away from my sin. And I turn to you, Lord Jesus. And I thank you for saving me, Lord, for writing my name in the Lamb's Book of Life in heaven. And if you prayed from your heart something like that or even that, whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God will not cast you away. He will accept you. What's the next thing? Let me read this scripture for you. He says that if thou, if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised you from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So confession can't be a a secret Christian, you got to confess him. Doesn't mean you have to go out on the street and carry a big sign. It just means tell someone. Tell your neighbor, tell your friend, tell your mom, tell your dad, tell your wife, tell your husband, tell your pastor. Just tell someone, hey, I asked Jesus to be my Savior. And when you do that, he says, if you'll confess me before man, I will confess you before the angels of God, and I will confess you before my Father. Hallelujah. <laughs> then I read... I've already spoken, verse 13 says, whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I just want you to have assurance. And uh, it says, I'll give you this scripture real quick. It says in 1 John 5, 13, these things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. So the word of God, I'm just using this little New Testament today, was written so that you could have confidence and assurance in your heart that if you've done what the Bible says to do, you'll be saved. So that when you go to bed at night, you don't have to worry about dying in your sleep and going to hell. You can have assurance. You can lay down and be in peace about that. If something happens to you, you're on your way to heaven to see your loved ones that's already been there because you asked Jesus to be your Savior. This will give you confidence. It also it says in uh, 1 Peter, he says, Desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. I would, I would uh, admonish you to read the word. Read the New Testament especially. Read it, read it, read it, read it. And as you do that, it will cause you to spiritually mature as a Christian. Go to a church somewhere where they believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. And they preach the word of God as God's word. And if you'll do that, I believe you'll prosper and I believe you'll grow as a Christian. Uh, so get around some other Christians and hang out with them. Don't hang out with the old crew you used to run with because they will cause you to fall down like that. Find some Christian men and women and hang out with them and they will encourage your faith and they'll be there for you and they'll pray for you. God bless.